Hi guys, Dane here, and today I am going to be doing the latest instalment in my bookcase tour, which I think is number 21, but I don't know, I forgot to check. And I'm just going to go and dive right in. Okay, so we'll start here with John Nickel. This is White is the Coldest Colour. Be careful who you trust. Uh, this was a fairly generic uh, thriller from what I remember, and uh, it was okay for what it was. I don't think I'd necessarily recommend it, because I have a lot of these fairly generic thrillers. This is from uh, when I... When I started my book blog, really, I, I pretty much just accepted any books that got sent to me. And so I read a lot of fairly generic thrillers. Okay, this book, there is a story to this book. It's a nice, embarrassing one. This is Rosemary Nickel, co uh, Coping Successfully with Your Irritable Bowel. Basically, I have ir irritable bowel syndrome. It's actually linked to my anxiety. I was diagnosed with it maybe like four or five years ago now. And actually, uh, touch touch wood. I don't have any wood. So, uh, do that. Um... But actually, since going vegan, it's been a lot better. So potentially, like things like cheese, probably wasn't particularly helping with it. But um, I read this book to kind of get an understanding of the illness and how you can manage the symptoms and all this stuff. And then I wrote a review of it because I write a review of every book that I do. And the review cross posted to Facebook. So then all my Facebook friends started liking the fact that I'd read this book. But hey ho, no stigma and all that. Here we have Claire North, The End of the Day. I read this for, um, uh, I was on the shadow panel for uh, the Young Adult Writer of the Year Award. And this was one of five shortlisted books. It was eventually won by uh, Sally Rooney, Conversations with Friends, which I didn't like. <laughs> uh, this was okay. It had a bit of like Terry Pratchett vibes to it almost. I mean, the main character it was, was basically a death's assistant. But yeah, it was it was okay. It was longer than it needed to be, I think, and that kind of held it back for me. But I think I enjoyed it the most out of all five people on the panel, and I gave it like three point seven five out of five. So take of, make of that what you will. Up next, we have the Darwin Awards by Wendy Northcutt, and basically the Darwin Awards you might have seen it online before. It's basically kind of satirical awards for people who've died in weird and unusual ways. So quite a lot of accidents, uh, 180 bizarre true stories of how dumb humans have met their maker. I mean, it is kind of sad in a way because you're reading about people who actually died, but also it is kind of entertaining. There was one guy I remember who uh, he got drunk and he tried to, he couldn't find his keys, so he tried to climb in through his own kitchen window and uh, he banged his head on the tap, knocked himself out, turned the tap on and drowned with his head in the sink. So yeah, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> Here we have Nathan O'Hagan, The World Is Not A Cold Dead Place. Uh, this is quite a bleak novel, I guess. Uh, I'll read you the blurb. Um, Welcome to Gary Lennon's world. It isn't a cold dead place. You'll like it there. You'll see things his way and you'll want to stay. But Gary's therapist has other ideas. He thinks Gary should get a job, meet people and interact with the real world. Look out people, look out world. So uh, yeah, I quite enjoyed this one. I actually don't remember it too well, but I remember the way it made me feel, if that makes sense. I mean, it's been a good five, six years since I read it now. But uh, yeah, it was pretty good for what it was. Here we have Lunch Poems by Frank O'Hara. Uh, I studied O'Hara at university and, and specifically uh, Lunch Poems, this, this little book. Uh, I didn't actually fully read it until afterwards though because we only studied like the concept behind the book and then a few of the poems So basically the idea was that O'Hara used to go for walks on his lunch break and he'd write poems on his lunch break And uh, that's actually something that I adopted as well after uh, after I got uh, diagnosed with anxiety I started making sure I took proper lunch breaks and used to go and sit in the park with a packed lunch and used to write poems So uh, thanks for that Frank O'Hara. Yeah, definitely read this if you're into poetry. Shall I? I'll read you one. Go on. It's a bit of a tradition from the tour. This one's called Poem. Instant coffee with slightly sour cream in it and a phone call to the beyond, which doesn't seem to be coming any nearer. Ah, daddy, I want to stay drunk many days on the poetry of a new friend, my life held precariously in the seeing, hands of others, there and my impossibilities. Is this love, now that the first love has finally died, where there were no impossibilities? Cheers, Frank. He actually eventually died, I believe. He was drunk. And he got hit by a golf cart and then died after, like, the injuries. Yeah. Maggie O'Sullivan, Waterfalls. This is uh, poetry from Reality Street. So I used to be a Reality Street supporter. Uh, so my name's actually in the back of this book on that page there somewhere. It's quite experimental stuff. You can kind of see from the layout here. I don't know if I'd necessarily recommend it unless you are a poet, you know? I don't even know if I could read any of this. I'll try and read this page. Great sweep of magpie, young magpies, time now. I counting to the life, asking after, asking after. I'd say animal, putting spirit, nor is the moon extinguished. Yeah, I mean, 
Pretty, it's pretty cool for what it is, I think. One of the more approachable reality street books, actually. Here we have Mock the Week. All new scenes we'd like to see from the hit BBC2 a comedy show. This is here in my collection alphabetically for some reason. It's based on uh, Mock the Week, the TV show. So, uh, for example, 34, Lives from Everyday Life. There is a good service on all un London underground lives. Butchered that a little bit, didn't I? Oh, there we go. There was a bookish one. Books headed straight for the bargain bin. How to Grow Old with Dignity by Peter Stringfellow. Lovely. 100 Great Guinea Pig Recipes. Lady Thatcher's Lover. All right, so yeah, we've got that. Then we have uh, Ronnie, the autobiography of Ronnie O'Sullivan. I mean, I used to be really into snooker when I was young. I actually used to watch snooker on a black and white TV. Uh, you could kind of tell which balls are which by like the different shades they were in, I guess. But that was, that was just the TV that I had. That's how old I am. I had a black and white TV and you had to tune it in. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but yeah, this is Ronnie O'Sullivan's autobiography. He's my favourite snooker player, so I enjoyed it for what it was. I don't know if you'd enjoy it if you weren't a Ronnie O'Sullivan fan, but then I don't know why you'd read it, so... Okay, here we have Barack Obama, Dreams from My Father, and The Audacity of Hope. I uh, read these a few years ago now, and they basically kind of go one after the other, so I think... Which one was first? Was the I think The Audacity of Hope was first. Oh no, Dreams from My Father was first, my bad. Anyway, either way, they were both pretty good. Uh, you know, good good way to see kind of how... Well, it made Obama as a president, because I read it, I think, probably during his first term, maybe, or maybe towards the end of his first term. But it made me kind of understand him more as a, as a president, and so a lot of the decisions he made, I could kind of see how he arrived at them as well, you know? Um, but yeah, I like Obama. Uh, I, I think he's pretty cool. All right, next up we have a series. So here we have Death Note Black Edition, volumes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 by Takeshi Oba and, no sorry, Sugumi Oba and Takeshi Abata. Uh, it's all manga obviously, so you read it from uh, right to left. I'll, I'll just hold one up to show it to you really. I mean, Death Note is great. I already kind of um, knew the basic story because of uh, the movies, the Japanese movies. I also saw the Netflix ad adaptation, which wasn't so great. Uh, so, I don't know. I actually thought that the movies probably hadn't covered everything, whereas actually they had hello biggie that's 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 very kind of you to sit there isn't it do you put these down are you gonna are you gonna come and say hello come here bud ra, 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 ra. hello ah! you scratched my knee <laughs> ow all right Okay, well, we'll switch the angle, shall we, Biggie, so you can sit in for a bit. So, yeah, Death Note was great. I would definitely recommend reading it. I do think the first couple of volumes were better than the last few. But overall, yeah, good stuff. Great artwork, great storytelling, just all round, stunning job. Okay, here we have Alexander Orlov, A Simple's Life, My Life and Times. This is a very gimmicky book. It's by Alexander Orlov from the Compare the Market adverts. Simples. Um... <laughs> And also, I have this box set here of Meerkat Tales. He's gone. All right. So this is a box set of Meerkat Tales. We've got uh, Alexander and the Mysterious Night Cat. We have got Bogdan and the Big Race. Uh, Maya in the Beautiful Ballet. Sergei's Space Adventure. Uh, Vasily the King of Rock. And Yakov Saves Christmas. So, I mean, <laughs> I bought these as a bit of a joke, really, because, I mean, the Compare the Market adverts are like, you know, I don't know, pretty well-known adverts, at least here in the UK. But uh, basically, they created, like, Facebook profiles for each of the characters from them, and they had a lot of, like, interactions between them. And I used to write about them a lot for my job as a social media marketer, because I was like, this is a great way that they found of taking this static TV campaign and, you know, creating a social media marketing campaign around it. So I ended up getting these books for that that reason, really. They're quite, you know, they're, they're nice enough. They're quirky and a bit, little bit of fun, but, like, not great literature, obviously. But, um, yeah, I want to show you that box set. That actually goes up on top of my bookcase now, as do the rest of my box sets. But uh, that's the only one I haven't done a wrap-up of. So I'm going to, instead of re-going over those box sets as part of the bookcase tour, we're just going to skip through. And actually, after the next episode... Uh, we get to Terry Pratchett and I've already done my Terry Pratchett sh like collection tour so that's going to kind of act as 
I don't know, an early an early filmed instalment of this series, if that makes sense. I don't know what I'm talking about. I, I do, kind of. I don't know. We'll go. All right, here we have George Orwell. Save me, Orwell. Oh, this is all Orwell. So this is my Orwell collection, I guess. So we have Animal Farm, probably one of my, my favourites of his. I think I preferred this over 1984, but obviously both are masterpieces. I don't really need to say too much about Animal Farm, I don't think. It's an allegory set on a, on a farm. We have a Burmese Days. So, um, so yeah, this is uh, kind of his depiction of Burma, basically. Orwell served there as a police officer. And it kind of covers, I suppose, the British attitude towards the, the locals there as well. We have Coming Up For Air. This is like um, more of what you'd call like a, a normal novel, I guess. It's about this guy, what's his name? Uh, George Bowling. So, uh Fat 45 and wearing new false teeth. He's not a fool, but not a highbrow either. He sells insurance, lives in a semi-detached house, blah, blah, blah. But uh, also he fears the modern world, the wars coming along. And so it's quite a human novel, you know, as opposed to some of these more political books that he's got. We have Down and Out in Paris and London. This one was really interesting because this is based on his experiences of basically living down and out in Paris and London, you know, um, almost as a beggar. It's almost like early investigative journalism, I would say. And uh, yeah, it's just really interesting to read about how they survived with sort of little to no money. Here we have Homage to Catalonia. So this is about uh, or based upon his experiences in the Spanish Civil War. So, uh, yeah, let's see. I'm going to read the blurb of this, actually. This one is probably one of my favourites as well. Every line of serious work that I have written since 1936 has been written directly or indirectly against totalitarianism and for de democratic socialism as I understand it. Thus wrote Orwell following his experiences as a militiaman in the Spanish Civil War, chronicled in homage to Catalonia. Here he brings to bear all the force of his humanity, passion and clarity, describing with bitter intensity the bright hopes and cynical betrayals of that chaotic episode. So yeah, it's quite like historically significant as well, you know? Here we have Keep the Aspidistra Flying. This is, I suppose, uh, another one of those more sort of portraits of of a humanity as a, as a hu single human being rather than like the big sort of political, uh, you know, not satires, but you know, the, the, take, the takes on the politics of the time that he writes. This is more about the takes on, on life itself, I think. Here we have 1984. Uh, I don't know what happened to my cover of it. It's just been well loved, you know. Uh, reread it a few times. I'm probably about to do another read, uh, reread, actually. I might do that. So let me know if you'd be interested in me giving it a reread via audio and uh, and uh, doing a, re a review of it, and we, we will see. But uh, yeah, obviously a classic in the dystopian field. It was my favourite dystopian until I read The Handmaid's Tale, and Margaret Atwood snuck in ahead of Orwell, which, as you can see, I'm an Orwell fan, so that's saying a lot. Here we have The Road to Wigan Pier. So uh, this is more about his uh, experiences of working-class life in uh, Lancashire. My friend actually lives in Wigan. I've been there a few times. Cat's meowing from behind me. We'll move on. Uh, another really well-written book. But to be honest, I think of all of the stuff he writes, you know, like this, I I think I prefer Homage to Catalonia the most and then maybe Down and Out in Paris and London. I think those are my two of his, like, the, the books that are more based on his life, you know? And then we have Why I Write. And uh, this is like a Penguin, I think from a box set maybe that I don't have, Penguin Great Ideas. And basically my problem with this is it doesn't cover why he wrote. It's, I think, or he does it for about four pages. He talks about why he writes. And then the, the remainder of this like 100 odd page book is him talking about politics, which is fine. But I was reading this specifically because I wanted a bit of writing inspiration at the time and it just didn't deliver it, you know? But uh, yeah, I, it's, it is what it is, I suppose. All right, next we have a bit of a weird one. This is the Oxford Modern English Dictionary. And I have read this cover to cover all, all pretty much. I guess I didn't necessarily read every definition, but I read down going through all the bolded words in it, trying to find interesting words for a book that I wrote called The Lexicologist's Handbook, which is basically a dictionary of weird and obscure words. So this was one of the sources I used among sort of many others. And so yeah, I read the, the, all of the words anyway that are defined whether whether I read their definitions or not well I did not but uh, we're counting it as read uh, then we have then we have Julian Pacheco this is the lucky ones this was actually another of the books for the uh, young writer of the year award and this was my favorite from the lot actually and it was the one we picked as a winner as a as the shadow panel obviously it didn't it didn't win it lost out to uh, Sally Rooney which was my least favorite book and I think I think Pacheco was robbed this is kind of almost a cross between a novel and a short story collection it's also kind of very psychedelic with some of the imagery that's used uh, it, you know how when you're reading Alice in Wonderland and everything's just a bit weird that's what you kind of get here and I, I really love this cover as well and just the I mean favor and favor is excellent I would 
Actually, I probably might reread this soon as well, especially if there's an audio book of it. Here we have Words as Weapons. So this was edited by Rowan Padmore and it's got poetry in it by AJ, Doug Lucy, Lucy Jacobs, Mary Bell, Peter Cox MBE, Rowan Padmore and Tom Kuhn. And this was produced in conjunction with like a writing workshop at uh, Art to the Old Fire Station in Oxford and Crisis, the homelessness charity. And uh, so basically that's where my girlfriend works. She works at the uh, Old Fire Station, the art center. And so she told me about this and I said it looked really cool and she gave me a copy. And I also uh, met Rowan Padmore as well. Uh, we had a few beers, which was nice. So yeah, cool, would recommend, especially because it's sort of in support of charity. The poetry might not be the, the best, but it's because it's real people from a poetry workshop as opposed to long-term poets, you know? Next up we have Wonder by AJ Palacio. This is about a kid with a facial disfigurement. I thought it was handled pretty well and fairly well written. I actually probably gave this, I think like a four out of five. But my problem with this is actually how much Palacio has then milked the series. Because I looked up to see if she, or I think it's a she. Um, uh, and I looked up to see if they'd written anything else. And basically everything else that they've published has been like Wonder the Graphic Novel. Or uh, Wonder the Official Calendar and all this stuff. And I'm like, that's kind of made me lose a little bit of respect for them. It's made me think that maybe they're a bit of a one-trick pony. But this book was pretty good. I mean, if the sort of subject matter takes your fancy and you know you're into sort of I guess it's kind of middle grade uh yeah check it out all right then we have my Chuck Palahniuk Paulinick I never know how to say it we've got Choke so this is about a man that basically he makes his money by going into restaurants and then deliberately choking on food uh this is like his scam and then yeah it kind of follows his story I guess we have Fight Club his most well-known one it's about uh, a dude called what's his name Edward is it Edward Who's, what's the main character's name? It only talks about Tyler Durden on the bloody thing. Oh no, Edward Norton was in it. Well, I can't remember the name of the character in it, but uh, obviously then you've got Tyler Durden, who is the other main character in it. They have a Fight Club. Oh, I can't, in fact, I'm not, I shouldn't talk about Fight Club because, you know, reasons. All right, then we have Rant. Probably my favorite Chuck Palahniuk, poor Palahniuk uh, book. Uh, this is like an oral history. The, the main guy is actually dead before it starts, but you do get to hear from his point of view as well, I believe, and also through things like his friends, his acquaintances. And it's in this weird, like, nightmarish world where you have the daytimers and the nighttimers. And so, um, I don't know, it's almost post-apocalyptic in its feel, but, it, but that's not, strictly speaking, true. Uh, I, I would just say read it. Although I did hear somewhere that Rant is one of those books, I mean, I don't care for gender norms or whatever, but... Uh, I heard that Rant is a book that most of his male fans say it's their favourite of his and most of the female fans say it's the least favourite. So I don't know if there's anything in that. Then we have uh, Tell All, which I actually really recently read. This is basically, it follows the story of like the hired help for a Hollywood sort of celebrity. And this hired help thinks, you know, she runs the household because she organises everything. You know, she makes sure that the actual actress doesn't sort of do anything stupid basically and then this love interest comes along and this hired help starts finding these like drafts that he's written of like a tell-all sort of biography of her but it's kind of clear that he plans to kill her and then release this book afterwards so we follow what happens there a few twists and turns throughout it it's had a lot of criticism online i saw but uh, i quite liked it I, I mean it was a 3.5 it wasn't quite a 4 but um it was very different to all of his other stuff that I've read so far as well. So it was more kind of on the literary fiction kind of kind of edge. And uh, it was interesting to see that from him. All right, then we have Palgrave's Golden Treasury of Love Poems. So I believe, yeah, Palgrave was professor of poetry at Oxford from 1885 to 95. And he's got a lot of these sort of golden treasury books around. This one's just got a few in. I mean, it's got John Gay, Robert Burns, Samuel Taylor Coleridge, Sir Walter Scott, uh, Elizabeth Barrett Browning, Lord Tennyson. So, so if you're into love poetry, check it out. I think I picked it up because it was super cheap for like 25p or something. And uh, sometimes when I go into charity shops, if I see something like this, I'm like, I'm just going to buy it. So at least I bought something, you know. And finally, for this video, we have What's Cooking Vegetarian. This is by Paragon Press. Don't bother with this. It wasn't very good. I think, well, for a start, I'm vegan. And so I had to like veganize a few of them. But there were only like three recipes that I was even interested in. And they, they just didn't. They weren't very good so but i mean you can kind of tell from looking at it, it's quite an old book as well so yeah all right well my, my my throat is going a bit funny so i am glad that i finished filming this but as always thanks a lot for watching don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so what you thought of them hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video hit subscribe for more and i will see you soon for another bookish video thanks a lot Bye bye